Space transportation is a very complex area and requires interdisciplinary approach to solve uh, the, the problems and to, to gain new knowledge. The work we are doing here is really important because there are still a lot of unknowns out there to make a flight mission successful and to further improve, for instance, payload to Mars. We really are the interface between basic and general science and space engineering. We like to give engineers the, the tools and the information that they need to design a space mission with as little uncertainty as possible. The DLI is a German Aerospace Center. It's the biggest engineering establishment in Germany with uh, more than 8,000 uh, employees. We in the spacecraft department are part of the Institute of Aerodynamics and Float Technology with branches in Göttingen, Braunschweig and Trauen. The scientific focus of the department is the design of aerospace vehicles and the analysis of aerospace vehicles. The employees are usually aeronautical or aerospace engineers with a focus on fluid mechanics and flight mechanics. We look at the, the complete spectrum you, you can imagine. So first of all, you have to, to launch a vehicle from, from ground. When you go into space, you have to control the spacecraft. And uh, ultimately, when, when you want to come back to Earth, you have to re-enter the atmosphere. The focus of the department is on reusable space transportation systems. Reusable launch vehicles requires a high reliability. And to improve this, we use the tool of numerical flight tests. We have experts in, in experimental methods and also in numerical modeling. And, and these people here are sitting together in, in the offices. They, they see each other every day. AGG is the high entropy shock tunnel here at DLA in Göttingen. And it's a free piston driven shock tunnel, which allows us to, to duplicate test conditions so we see during re entry of capsules, for instance, or during hypersonic sustained flight. Two, one, and go. The combination of experimental work and, uh, and CFD is very important. At the moment in the tunnel we have a um, porous ceramic uh, which is designed to control hypersonic bottleneck transition and the CFD part on this would be to verify whether our experiment results match the predictions made in CFD and if not to improve the model. One of our most recent and also very exciting uh, successes is uh, the test we did within the HEXAFLY campaign. We found a flow phenomena uh, which was not uh, foreseen by CFD before. STGCT is our test facility in which we can study the free expansion of a thruster plume emerging from a chemical thruster. This test facility is a large vacuum chamber that is equipped with a giant cryopump. We can uh, pump even hydrogen and maintain a space-like background pressure. We're specifically studying plume spacecraft interaction effects, so we call that plume impingement effects. Predominantly that is uh, concerned with contamination. Recently we've been uh, conducting studies uh, concerning uh, lander and sample return operations particularly, in connection with VISA mission to Mars moon Phobos and the NASA mission to Jupiter's moon Europa. This is the DLR High Vacuum Plume Test Facility for Electrical Thrusters, where we qualify actual space hardware for our customers. We also uh, run a much smaller facility that we use for general research, basic research on, say, sputtering effects with electric propulsion devices. As space missions uh, last a long time, on the order of 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years, we need to make sure that these continuously operating electric thrusters really survive during that period. We were involved with testing the thrusters and the technology for the European Commission LEO sweep uh, project, removing uncooperative targets from the Leo low Earth orbit by shooting an ion beam towards that target. Here we are at the hybrid rocket engine a test facility. Here we can test hybrid rocket engines with an oxidizer mass flow up to 8 kilograms per second for a time of up to 30 seconds. In recent years we have achieved a complete or nearly complete fuel consumption and therefore uh, we have increased the efficiency nice. of the engines. For the design of our hybrid rocket engines, uh, we use our software ARES. We need uh, numerical simulation results so we can calculate uh, some complex phenomena like uh, particle combustion. We 
Numerical error thermodynamics is really important for spacecraft design because it allows us to uh, look at the conditions we encounter for a space vehicle before we actually build it. So we use this to design the vehicle. We use it as input for thermal and mechanical loads. Because it's such a combined process, because the, the mechanical loads, the thermal loads, the, the subsystems, they all operate together, that you can't really decouple them. It would be really, really interesting if you have a model that can show how all these things interact. Really, the ultimate goal is to, to develop a, a virtual spacecraft to fly in the spacecraft before it's really built. To develop a virtual spacecraft, we need uh, a lot of areas. The flow part, structural solver, then you have a flight mechanic solver, then atmospheric models, wind models, as well as gravitational models. And all of them come together to one big process. Depending on the computational power we have now available in our cluster, we are very near to a virtual spacecraft. Fortunately, the DLR has a high-performance cluster, which has about 140,000 cores. Once we are able to model a complete virtual spacecraft, we are able to significantly increase the reliability of future systems. Space transportation is very expensive, and this significantly reduces the risk we try to find the way into the future, what is the most suitable configuration and how should it be launched and land in order to accomplish our missions in, in Europe. It's rocket science, right? It's very hard to find another place where you can look at problems involving combustion, space propulsion that could have a bigger impact in the long run.